Welcome enthusiasts! In today's video, we're diving deep into the art and science of drying cannabis, with a special focus on one of the most practical and beginner-friendly methods, rack drying. Whether you're a seasoned grower or just starting out, mastering the drying process is essential for preserving the integrity of your cannabis plants while avoiding mold and enhancing their overall quality. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to set up your drying area, manage environmental conditions, and oversee the drying process. But before we begin, please remember that this is an educational video and therefore all information provided is for educational purposes only. Now let's get started. Drying cannabis is a crucial step in the post-harvest process that prepares your buds for curing, storage, and eventual consumption. Think of it as the bridge between a fresh harvest and the final product. While often overlooked in favor of growing and flowering stages, proper drying is what locks in the flavors, aromas, and potency of your cannabis. This stage involves carefully reducing the moisture content in the plant material to preserve its integrity. Freshly harvested cannabis contains a significant amount of water, which can account for up to 80% of its weight. If this moisture isn't removed in a controlled and gradual manner, the plant's buds are at serious risk of developing mold and mildew, rendering them unsafe for consumption. This is why drying cannabis plants correctly is a crucial step in ensuring a high-quality final product that is safe, effective, and enjoyable. Drying is essentially a slow dehydration process. To do it correctly, you need to create an environment where moisture leaves the plant at a controlled rate. Too fast, and you'll trap chlorophyll and harsh compounds inside the buds, resulting in a grassy flavor. Too slow, and you risk mold growth. Beyond preservation, drying initiates chemical changes within the plant. Cannabinoids like THC and CBD are still in their acidic forms, also known as THCA and CBDA, right after harvest. The drying process helps to stabilize the terpenes and begins the decarboxylation process, which modifies these acids into their active forms. There are several methods for drying cannabis, depending on your setup, preferences, and scale of operation. The most common include hang drying, rack drying, and box drying. While we would love to cover all of these topics in this video, it would simply take up too much time. So instead, we are going to focus on the one we think everyone should know, and that is rack drying. Rack drying is a method of curing freshly harvested cannabis by placing the plant material on mesh or stackable racks. These racks are specifically designed to allow air to circulate freely around the buds, promoting even drying. This can be an ideal method for beginners or those with limited space by offering a straightforward, efficient, and economical way to dry cannabis. The simplicity of placing buds on stackable racks and monitoring basic conditions like humidity and temperature makes it particularly appealing to new growers. This method also provides excellent space efficiency by allowing cultivators to maximize vertical space and small compact areas. Furthermore, the mesh design of the racks promotes even drying by ensuring air circulates around each bud, reducing the risk of mold and mildew. Finally, the lightweight and portable nature of the racks makes them easy to move if adjustments to the drying environment are needed. While rack drying is efficient and beginner-friendly, there are a few considerations to keep in mind. First, you'll need a controlled environment with proper ventilation, temperature, and humidity to ensure optimal drying conditions. Even though racks save space, you'll still need a dedicated area where you can maintain these conditions. The initial investment for the racks themselves is relatively low, but additional tools such as hygrometers, fans, and dehumidifiers may be required to create the ideal drying environment. Another factor to consider is trimming preferences. Today, many growers prefer wet trimming, which simply means they remove excessive leaves and stems before rack drying to reduce bulk and speed up the process. On the other hand, some growers opt for dry trimming. By leaving the leaves intact, it can slow down the drying process and protect the buds from overdrying. The choice between wet and dry trimming often depends on personal preference, the desired outcome, and the drying conditions available. Traditionally, the rack drying process typically takes 7 to 14 days, depending on the environmental conditions. 
The ideal drying environment for cannabis is a temperature of 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit with relative humidity levels between 55 and 65 percent. During this period, the buds should dry slowly and evenly to preserve their terpenes and cannabinoids. Rushing the process by increasing temperature or airflow can result in a harsh, less flavorful product, while inadequate drying risks mold development. Knowing when your cannabis is ready involves a combination of touch, observation, and something called the snap test, which is when you gently bend a small branch, it should snap cleanly rather than bend. When the buds are ready, they will feel dry to the touch, but not overly brittle or crumbly. If they still feel moist or spongy, they likely need more time. Achieving the perfect dryness is a balance. Overly dry cannabis can degrade cannabinoids and terpenes, while underdried cannabis risks mold during storage. Setting up a rack drying area involves careful planning and attention to environmental conditions. The first step is selecting a suitable space, such as a dark, temperature-controlled room or grow tent with good ventilation. Proper airflow is essential, so ensure the area can accommodate oscillating fans to gently circulate air. As mentioned earlier, you'll also need tools such as drying racks, a hygrometer to monitor humidity, a thermometer to measure temperature, and possibly a humidifier or dehumidifier depending on the environment. When setting up your drying racks, position them about 6 to 12 inches apart and place the top rack at a height that is easy to access while ensuring the bottom rack is not too close to the floor. By keeping the lower rack elevated, it helps to maintain proper airflow and prevents exposure to dust or contaminants. Additionally, make sure the racks are kept horizontal to prevent the buds from sliding or bunching together, which can cause uneven drying or unwanted compression. Once the racks are set up, arrange the buds in a single layer. Since smaller buds dry faster than larger ones, grouping them together allows you to easily remove them once they're ready without disrupting the drying process for the larger buds. This thoughtful organization not only ensures consistent results, but also makes managing the drying process more efficient and hassle-free. And that wraps up today's deep dive into the art and science of drying cannabis, with a special focus on the rack drying method. Remember, Drying is not just a process, it's a craft that requires attention to detail and patience. Whether you're a seasoned grower refining your techniques or a beginner taking your first steps, mastering this stage will make all the difference in the quality of your final product. Thank you for joining us on this educational journey. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're always up to date with our latest content and we'd love to hear from you. Comment below with your thoughts, questions, or experiences with rack drying. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay curious.